but it's afternoon rush hour. It's not always this busy, but it's about 5 p.m. and the local workers and the tourists are heading out of town, but we're going to head in the opposite direction, deep into the heart of the city. We're taking a stroll in the back streets of Venice. Now in this walk, we're bringing you into the heart of San Polo and part of Santa Croce. This is the central area of Venice, even though it's usually overlooked by the visitor. The visitor goes down the Grand Canal to Piazza San Marco and sees very little else, perhaps the Rialto. But today we're going to show you this medieval historic heart of Venice. We're going down some of the typical paths here. We're going against the flow. There's some folks still making their way towards the train station. And we're going to take you into some central little plazas. They call them campi, fields, where the locals gather at about 5 p.m., 6 p.m. down these very quiet little alleys to get there. Having been to Venice 25 times, I'm amazed each time I go at the new discoveries. Here's some fellows setting up their sidewalk restaurant. The table's already set inside and they just carry it out right onto the sidewalk, ready to go. Usually the restaurants open about 7 p.m. for dinner. And now we have arrived at this little Shangri-La. It's the Campo San Giacomo. And somehow this eludes nearly every tourist who ever comes to Venice. I would guess 99% of the tourists to Venice have never seen Campo San Giacomo. Most of the folks here are local residents, born and raised here, and still here yet today, every day. It's just a wonderful local gathering spot. You can see this is a society that really functions. The people know each other, there's extended families, there's large networks of friends and neighbors, and each part of Venice forms a small town unto itself where everybody knows each other. People of all ages, from the very youngest, playing their soccer with grandpa, and great-grandpa, to the teenagers, kids on their bicycles. Those are the only wheeled vehicles that you'll see in Venice, bicycles of the young kids. And the occasional tourist who is probably lost and wondering where they are and trying to get out of here. But you might join in the game with these kids too. They don't have any big soccer fields, so they use these plazas or the Campo as a place to kick the ball around. Venice is a living city, as you can tell. It isn't just for tourists. There are generations living together here, maintaining the tradition that's been going on for 1,400 years. That's how long Venice has been occupied as it's grown and grown over the centuries. Campo San Giacomo, like most important compi here has got a church, there's cafes, there's some former palaces around the campo. And at this time of day, it is at its best. It's about 5 p.m. through 6 p.m. Everybody's out before dinner, just cruising. The guys have got a little soccer game going. Yep, running around burn off that energy for these young guys. The Church of San Giacomo dell'Orio is one of the oldest in Venice, originally built in the 9th century. Of course, what we see today has been considerably rebuilt since then. And there are a couple of restaurants here. There's a great inexpensive restaurant called La Zucca. But this restaurant has become so incredibly popular, you have to make a reservation, otherwise you will not get in. And all around in the neighboring lanes and alleys, there are some wonderful pizzerias. And by pizzeria, 
in Venice, we mean a restaurant where you sit down inside, you can have some fresh pasta, salad, and then next to Campo San Giacomo, there is yet another campo. This is Campo Nazario Sado. And again, it's a local gathering spot, as you can tell. This is even smaller than Campo San Giacomo. It's a teeny place with one cafe, tables in the middle, and local folks just passing the afternoon together. This Campo Nazario Saro is tucked away in a very inconspicuous place, and it's the sort of spot that's not listed in guidebooks, and it's unlikely you'd run into it unless you stumble upon it by accident. And if you do, well, stop and have a look and maybe even stop and have a drink. And there's various streets that head off from the Campo. You can go this way or that and take your pick because each direction will be quite rewarding. You might continue your walk heading south along Calle Tentor. And this is in the direction of Campo San Polo and heading down towards the Church of the Frari. Or you could walk north from Campo San Giacomo and be back at the train station really in about 10 minutes if you knew which way you were going. Sometimes it does get a little confusing, especially when you go through a tunnel like that. And then just check the signs. Okay, here's a whole bunch of signs. That gives us some idea. We're at Campo San Boldo. That's a little tiny campo. Head up over the bridge. You notice a lot of these bridges are in very good condition. They've actually done a tremendous amount of ongoing maintenance throughout Venice. Of course, a lot of the bricks are crumbling and the plaster is crumbling. Well, that's the humidity at work here, and that's what you expect to see in an old historic town anyway, where the buildings are hundreds of years old. You wouldn't expect everything to be sparkling clean, and, and if you do demand everything to be absolutely clean and modern and perfect, well, don't come to Venice. It's an old historic spot, and it is beautiful. It just might be the most beautiful city in the world. And you don't have to be an expert to enjoy it. You can get right into the swing of things on your very first visit, especially if you give yourself the proper time. Don't just come for a few hours or a day. You want to spend a few nights here so that you can really get a feeling for these little back streets as well as the big busy piazzas. Too many tourists come here on a bus tour for a day and all they see is the superficial facade of Piazza San Marco and maybe they'll take a gondola ride and then they leave and they didn't see Venice at all in the process. Instead, you need to just hang out, walk along, explore, enjoy these little back lanes, do some people watching. The alleys are generally not dead ends, although sometimes you will run into a dead end at the Grand Canal. But usually these alleys keep going and they connect, so don't worry about getting lost or wasting time. You just keep following your nose, notice where the people are, maybe Check your references on a map now and then. You can look at the signs. We've now arrived at the very large Campo San Polo. In fact, it's the largest campo in all of Venice. It's the second largest of the outdoor squares, the largest being the Piazza San Marco, of course. But there's only one piazza in Venice, and that's Piazza San Marco. These other spaces might be called a piazza in a different Italian town, but in Venice, they have a particular language and terminology. They call it a campo. It's a real neighborhood place. It's a real local kind of place. The sort of cafe, you see the families out. And it's just a delightful spot. Campo San Polo, you've got the cafes, you've got the alleys leading away from it. This one is a Soto Portego, where it's a covered lane. And it's now leading us onto one of the main shopping streets of the back part of Venice, heading towards the Rialto. This is a very enjoyable lane. At 5 p.m. it's really quite busy. Well, throughout the day it's busy. At night, things 
calm down. And the people go away, most of the people, and it gets very tranquil at night. But this is still the late afternoon rush hour. People are heading for the station. This is a major thoroughfare walking to the train station. It just takes about 20, 30 minutes to get to the train station by walking. It's actually faster than taking the Vaporetto, and it's a lot more scenic. You get to check out all of these shops as you go. Of course, riding the Vaporetto is another part of the great experience of Venice. That's the water bus. Notice the buildings are overhanging on both sides up above. These are called Barbicons, and it was a way of expanding the building and providing some more floor space. You see quite a few of those extended buildings. Space is really tight here in Venice. They don't have any land they can expand onto. They're out in the lagoon on islands, so they had to build up and close together. And we're getting closer and closer to the Rialto. We've taken you there previously. Just straight ahead is the Rialto market. But at this time of day, the produce vendors are all packed up and gone. By early afternoon, that Rialto market is beginning to shut down. But in the evening, the neighborhood takes on a different character. People come out for drinks at the outdoor cafe. The temperatures have gotten very comfortable, very pleasant. Even in the summertime, it's going to be maybe 70 degrees at this time of day in the late afternoon. Here's a real popular wine bar. Some friendly young locals out chatting. Probably every day they're here. Just by the Rialto, you can find them passing the old Church of St. John. Floating view of the city as we just walk along effortlessly. Maybe grab some gelato for a quick energy hit. That's always a treat in Italy. The kiosks offer pretty good bargains, and those guys stay open until late twilight. More restaurants, more bends and curves, under more buildings, another Soto Portego where the pathway is covered with yet another building. Now heading to a, a main street. This doesn't look like it perhaps to you, but this one is a wide, busy street. It's lined with shops nonstop and this little sidewalk stand. It's really a nice idea to just simply get lost. Pick a section of town, stake out maybe some parameters of what you'd like to see, and then just cut loose. And don't worry about where you are exactly or how you're gonna get out of there. Just keep on walking, you'll find your way. You can always ask somebody or check the signs, follow the crowd. It might begin to seem like all of these alleys look alike, but each one is different. There are so many narrow alleys in this central part of Venice, in fact, throughout Venice, but in particular, here it seems there are more narrow alleys than any other part of town. So you might wonder, how many alleys are there in this city of Venice? And it's estimated there are about 3,000 alleys. That's a lot. Of course, some of them are very short, maybe 50 feet long, 80 feet long. Others go winding and winding and changing names as they go. How far do they go? Well, it's estimated that the alleys of Venice extend for a total of about 90 miles. So if you were walking three miles an hour and you wanted to cover every single alley in Venice, which is pretty unlikely for even the most dedicated visitor, but three miles an hour, 90 miles, that's 30 hours. Or if you break it up into days, maybe in three days, you could actually theoretically cover the entire city walking down every alley. Now that's unlikely because you're going to be stopping, of course, when you walk through Venice, you don't go three miles an hour nonstop. You're looking here, looking there. The whole point of being in Venice is to stop and look around you and appreciate the beautiful sights that you see. So in other words, to cover every alley, it could take, well, a lifetime or at least a year, 
or maybe a month. So you might want to really drop anchor in a thorough visit to Venice. Rent an apartment, stay for a month or two in the wintertime when it's less crowded, and just really explore this amazing fabric of alleys in this maze of a city. No matter how many times you've been to Venice, you will always discover something different. It's about seven o'clock in the evening. The tourists are all heading home and Venice is being left to the locals and the few lucky visitors who are spending the night here and who happen to be out for a walk at the magic hour. Locals are out strolling, getting ready for dinner. Great time to be here. Normally when you're walking in Venice, you're either shopping or you're lost or you're going to a particular sightseeing location, destination like Piazza San Marco or trying to get back out of town, going to the Academia Bridge, some kind of a known landmark. But sometimes it's great just to wander. Never mind the principal signs and directions. Go the opposite way. Go down those little narrow alleys. Get into the local life of the town. Sometimes there's just no right answer. You don't have to go to a particular place when you're walking in Venice. Get a little bit lost, go around the corners, figure out where you are as you go. And you can walk down these little narrow residential lanes. It's a totally different character. You go under buildings, through tunnels, down narrow alleyways, and you come out in some little courtyards that go nowhere. This is just the residences where the people live. Some of these lanes are super narrow and some of them are covered over with a roof, buildings on top. Well, there are different ways to navigate in Venice. You can try and follow a map, but that's pretty difficult. If it's a good color map, large scale, you might have some luck. It'll certainly help out now and then. But the best way to navigate is follow the signs and follow other people and have a general sense of where you're heading. Well, folks, how did you like that walk? That's a very unusual look behind the scenes at Venice, a part of town that most visitors and most TV shows never get to see. Be it great to have a nice meal. How about Trotteria Bassetta, another slightly off the beaten track restaurant, and it's wonderful. The service is great, the food is excellent, and it's convenient, actually, right next to Campiello Riello. Look for it down this lane. It's only seven minutes walk away from the train station. Although you'd never find it if you didn't know where to look. And along the route, you're also going to notice some other restaurants. These are casual pizzerias and pasta places that cater to a mix of a local crowd as well as a tourist crowd and they are surprisingly good. It might say snack bar or pizzeria, but the food in here is outstanding. There's a half a dozen of those little places along this lane that's leading us back towards the train station and back towards our hotel. Well, it's been quite a long walk that we've taken you on. We've shown you parts of the sections of Santa Croce and San Polo that are really a delight for the senses and they are reason enough for you to go back to Venice. Even if you've been to Venice once, twice, five times, there is so much more to discover. And if you've never been to this city, you are really missing out. So make your plans real soon. Put this town high on your list as we complete the day and get back to our comfortable Hotel Abazia for a good night's rest.